Hello everyone, I'm James with Corelight. Today I'm going to provide a quick overview of the SSH log. This log provides protocol specific information about SSH sessions. And remember, when you pair this information with the connection log, you have a complete picture of the session. But let's take a look at elements of this log. The errors here represent the most basic, really minimal information you need to know about SSH connections. I think timestamp version and ciphers. And there are many methods to collect this. Specifically, PCAP comes to mind using Wireshark to view the data. But let's not overlook the information CoreLite easily adds. Everything begins with a unique identifier and its linkage to other logs. But here we also see authentication information, direction of the connection, and the client server version string. This last bit of information, the client server version string, is collected in the software log. Stay tuned for a future video introducing that log. If you haven't viewed the connection log introduction video, I'd suggest starting there. But back to this log. The SSH log provides salient information about an SSH connection. Now let's look at an actual SSH log to examine the fields together. But before we jump into that, let's quickly review the connection log in Splunk. Here we see the service is SSH, we are able to quickly identify the IP addresses, ports, and volume of data transferred during the session, as well as the unique identifier at the bottom. This final arrow highlights the Splunk data models for this connection. Now let's pivot to the SSH log and see what protocol specific information is available. We found the protocol log, in this case SSH via the unique identifier. This is the basic information about this connection, SSH version, key exchange used, host key, as well as client and server application identified, in this case OpenSSH. But let's look at additional information CoreLite provides. Hash. Hash is a network fingerprinting standard that can be easily stored, searched, and shared in the form of an MD5 hash. Now hash isn't perfect, but it works very well with data stacking to identify SSH server and client outliers. Check out the Salesforce GitHub page for additional information. This package is available to anyone who uses Zeek, but CoreLite adds additional SSH insights. We call them inferences. These two arrows highlight the inferences for this connection and a description of those inferences. CoreLite provides the description to assist new analysts or those new to CoreLite data. But how do you get those additional fields into the SSH log? This is a screenshot of the CoreLite interface where packages are managed. In this case, the hash package is highlighted as part of the core collection. Stay tuned for additional videos that provide greater detail on the encrypted traffic and C2 collections. Let's examine the encrypted traffic collection to see what else is available for SSH connections. This screenshot depicts all the available SSH inferences provided by CoreLite as part of the encrypted traffic collection. Sliding the blue button enables the inference and extends the SSH log. Let's talk about two of the inferences. FTD or file transfer detection really notifies you if a large or small file transfer occurs during the session. At the bottom, SSH stepping stones this detection is based on research going back many years, think, think decades. For specific information, check out the CoreLite blog for additional details. I hope you enjoyed this short overview of the SSH log. It was my pleasure sharing the information with you and illustrating one of the methods CoreLite has to provide insights into encrypted network data. If you have additional questions, please contact us. I believe we are stronger when we defend together, so good luck and good hunting.